In continuing our discussion of sexual reproduction, the first group of plants we're going to talk about are known as the angiosperms, and that simply means plants that produce flowers. These are the flowering plants. We can break angiosperms into two basic categories depending on how they are pollinated. When we have flowering plants that are wind pollinated, we can usually tell by taking uh, a close look at them. So let's say wind pollinated. Well, how can we tell? Well, wind pollinated flowers tend not to be very colorful because the wind doesn't care what color they would happen to be. Uh, and along those same lines, they usually won't have any scent because they don't need it to attract any animal type pollinators. And one final thing is they tend to produce massive quantities of pollen. So they produce lots of pollen. And this is just a strategy to help increase the chances that they might successfully pollinate another tree. They're just basically depending on the chance of the wind currents and so to hedge that bet they produce lots and lots of pollen. And many of us are plagued by this in the spring if you get hay fever or you'll notice that uh, in the spring every year you'll come outside for weeks on end and everything will have a little coating of what looks like yellow dust. Well that's predominantly pine pollen which are not angiosperms but they are also wind pollinated plants. The pine pollen is usually intermixed with or followed by oak pollen and oak produces pollen in the same way in that they use non-colorful flowers, they don't have any scent, and they produce a lot of pollen. And here is a photo of an oak male flowers. So true to form, these are the flowers here. These are referred to as catkins, but they're not very colorful. And, you know, they're really not much to look at. People don't grow oaks for the beauty of their flowers. They grow oaks for shade or whatever the case may be. And so being wind pollinated, oaks, among many angiosperms, don't go through all the trouble because it costs them in terms of sugars that their leaves make to make big showy flowers. And so they avoid that cost by having wind pollinate their flowers. Now, a great many plants are animal pollinated. And when you rely on animal species for pollinating your flowers, you tend to grow flowers that attract animals in one way, shape, or form. And there's a lot of different ways that they can do that. Uh, they're usually colorful. Uh, they will often have some sort of alluring scent to attract, you know, as a lure of a food source or perhaps a perfume to attract the opposite sex during breeding times, which is fairly common among bees and wasps that are basically tricked into visiting these flowers. And another thing, they often actually give a reward uh, in terms of nectar or some sort of other edible type of reward, uh, such as edible pollen. And as a general rule, they don't have to produce quite as much pollen, okay? Because, let's say, don't produce as much pollen because they have animals who basically hand deliver it from flower to flower for them and so they don't have to produce the massive quantities of pollen that wind pollinated plants such as many trees and all the grasses do. So here is a photo of an animal pollinated typical angiosperm flower and this is known as the butterfly pea. This is native to Asia. But as you can see, it's quite colorful. It's fairly large. And the reason it is is to attract, true to its name, butterflies to come and visit the flower. And this basically serves as advertisement for the flower to the butterfly to come and partake of some nectar. In exchange, the butterfly will get pollen on its either feeding parts or its legs when it lands on the flower and carry it to the next butterfly pea bloom that it visits. So you can tell right off the bat, generally speaking, whether it's animal pollinated or wind pollinated. The showier the flower, the smellier the flower, you can virtually guarantee that it is 
animal pollinated. And one other thing to point out as well, in relation to the types of animals that get attracted, blues, such as this flower, uh, and yellow and violet type colors usually equals insect pollinators, like in this case, butterflies. The scented flowers also almost exclusively attract insects because birds don't have, very few of them anyway, have much of a sense of smell. Red is the color that is very attractive to birds. And so, for example, as many of you probably know, hummingbird feeders are typically red in color because that's a very attractive color to birds, hummingbirds among others.